Gracious Father, we are so, so thankful and so grateful to to um, be alive and be here today. Mm -hmm. I thank you so much for us being here to study your word, to get a little bit of understanding and enlightenment and even revelation on slowfulness, the spirit of slowfulness. And I mm -hmm. pray that you would, I pray that we have eyes to see and ears that hear, mm -hmm. that we may hear and know more of your will and your purpose for our lives as individuals. Mm -hmm. I thank you for each of us that are on the line. I pray blessings over our home. I pray for those that were not able to make it, especially Miss Yvonne, mm -hmm. and pray that she is well and in good health. Um, I ask that you would just be with us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in. We welcome your yes. presence to um, give us utterance um, and to bring back our, to our memory the things that we need to bring up and discuss. And as a reminder, that helps us to walk closer with the Lord. We just love you, Father, and we thank you, and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I felt like as I was um, doing this, I said, man, this is the last one uh, of the of the, um, of the the landmines, even though I know we're going to go over the last chapter next week, next time that we meet. But this is the last one of them. So it took me back. I went back to... Um, if, uh, Corinthians was the mm -hmm. first Corinthians uh, 10 13 our original verse and mm -hmm. I just wanted to go over that so I, I'm reading that in the passion version I want to read that and then mm -hmm. I'll let that be a springboard um, it says we all experience times of testing which is normal for every human being mm -hmm. but God will be faithful to you he will screen and filter the severity nature and the timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more. For, mm. for, for along with each trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. Amen. And that's uh, in the Passion Version. So, and, and it, just, um, it just resonated with the way that the Lord was leading me in this particular lesson. And it's just going back. I am going to talk um, some of the excerpts from the book because he does bring out some good points. But mostly I just, I said, okay, Lord, explain soulfulness to us. And of course, the first thing we talk about is laziness. But the more I kind of went into it and, and read and, and spent time just uh, meditating on, um, he showed me that there's not only just slow, laziness is the word mm -hmm. that we know. Slowfulness translates to laziness. Mm -hmm. There's not only the word lazy that we know, but there seems to be a spirit of laziness mm -hmm. that has um, over not I won't say overtaken because as believers, I don't believe that we can overtake him, but that we are challenged with as believers. And uh, one piece that he did mention is that it's not only laziness and work, it's laziness in relationships, it's how we handle problems, it's mm -hmm. how we even approach life. So that's that uh, in in um in, in do, indolent um, is the mm -hmm. word I N D O L E N T, which is habitual laziness, or mm -hmm. I call it a spirit of laziness that we are challenged with. And so the Lord just took me back to the scripture and said, "Okay, first of all, one of the points that Dr. Stanley made was that um, laziness is dangerous because it like causes us to give up on the fact that God is all powerful and He's Almighty." Mm -hmm. Because laziness says, I just want to sit down and I don't want to do. Laziness mm -hmm. is um, doing the least just to get by. It's wanting more, but not doing what it takes, not not doing the very best. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a dangerous landmine because, of course, it turns us away from the will of God, from seeking the will mm -hmm. and the purpose of God. That's what I want to say, from seeking the will and the purpose of God because the person has given up. So in any case, so this, this scripture here like reminds us that even laziness, even a, a, a having like a spirit of laziness or just habitual laziness is not something that is not something that's too hard for God. It's not too hard for God and we can overcome it and mm -hmm. we can encourage people because sometimes, you know, when you see a lazy person, you're like, oh my God, you just, it just makes you, even when I see the late, let me just talk about me. When I mm -hmm. see the laziness in me, and I see that um, in, in not necessarily habitual laziness, but this one came when I became ill. 
um, the one thing that this MS comes with is total is fatigue. And all I want to do is sleep all day, every day and wake up and sleep again. Um, and that's the, that has been the biggest struggle that I've had. And so, and I, and I fight to read, I fight to study and stay up. I, I've, I've, I've conquered it, so to speak. I've, I've come out victorious because I recognized it. And um, that's huge. And recognizing who we are, what, what is trying to stop us from the Lord, stop mm -hmm. us from growing and gaining ground in as a believer. So anyway, so I'll talk about me. So that, that laziness can make you not want to read the scriptures, not want to pray, not believe that prayer is being effective, not even believing that God is hearing you because, you know, just want to go somewhere and just curl up and go to sleep or whatever, or not do or do the least. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've ever been plagued with doing the least. That's just not in my nature. But since I've been sick or since I had this challenge of MS, let me take that because I'm not claiming any sickness. But anyway, um, since I've had to deal with this, I do I am challenged with just wanting to just not do sometimes. And so when that happens, we're saying, okay, God, you're not strong enough to give me the strength to do what I need to do. He says that you, I am your strength and your refuge, you know, and we talk about dwelling in the secret place of the most high and what all that gets to us. Then if we don't dwell in that, and we don't uh, abide in Christ, then we will fall off or fall into the laziness. Now, I never, I didn't even have that in my notes, so but God wanted that to be said. So, well, and in Holy case, Spirit, oh, right there. I know, <laughs> I know. So, um, so no test. We will be tested, but again, no test comes to us that God does not give us a way, an escape. And one of the things that we'll see towards the end of this is God is showing us a way of, of getting past the, the landmine of laziness or how to overcome that and be victorious. Mm -hmm. um, but another place I want to stop this morning, I woke up and of course, Holy Spirit gave me a scripture just uh, in Luke 10, 19. And he was speaking about spiritual authority, about authority. Mm. And that's something that the Lord has just been really talking to me about as for us as believers is taking our authority when we use our God-given authority, uh, when we stand in our God-given authority and use our God-given power, then we can be successful in overcoming the things that happen, that enemy, that the enemy tries to attack us with. And so we are spirit beings. And so we have to stand in spiritual authority to overcome even the spirit of laziness. Any of the, uh, the and when he said, um, I give you, behold, I give you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions, any physical, mental, and ability, and excuse me, I give you, let me start over. Behold, I have given you the authority and power mm -hmm. to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physically and mental strength and ability over all the power of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And the scorpions and serpents represent uh, their emblems of the satanic, of the demonic. And so anything demonic that we come against, including the spirit of laziness or slowfulness, we can overcome it uh, mm -hmm. because the enemy has no authority. He's not he has no power over anything that can come from Jesus Christ or comes through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the J Jesus Christ in us makes us more powerful than the enemy. So laziness is dangerous because, of course, it makes us not see the plan that God's for us, not understand that God has a power maybe understand it, but not pursue the plan and the purpose that God has for us. Mm -hmm. um, and how he was, how Dr. Stanley talked about, um, we can get lazy in relationships. We don't want to fight for marriages. We don't want to fight for relationships, healthy relationships. We take offense and we give up and walk away instead of coming back and saying, Lord, what was that? You know, um, what was that? What? Why did that even happen? Not realizing that the enemy has used a situation to create division between us and another person. And we know that that's a good relationship and, or that's a right relationship, like say for Sandra and her husband, any kind of adversity that comes up that, we know that more than likely is the enemy trying to create separation. Mm -hmm. He would love nothing more than to break them up so that they can't be a representative to young men and women around the, whoever they encounter um, of marriage and, and the relationship that God created for man and woman. So 
sometimes I find that people will not fight for those relationships. You know, the Bible talks about, I think it's in uh, first Timothy six, he talks about fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we have faith, faith through love, we can fight those fights and we can save relationships. Mm -hmm. And and I know it takes two people, but one person he can say, he says, can set, um, uh, 5,000 a flight and two can set 10,000 a flight. So Mm -hmm. 10,000. So if we say, for instance, you're in a relationship and we can't come together with that person, maybe we need to, we got to call on the prayer warriors. We got to call one person. We don't have to get everybody involved, but call somebody and say, Hey, I need you to help me pray about this. Um, But, and the Bible talks about not taking offense, not being so ready to be caught off by offense. So um, fighting for relationships. So not being lazy in relationship. And he talked about how handling problems, just our approach to life is, Oh, well, a lazy person would say, Oh, well, give up. You know, I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to do anything because that's too much work. And that's how a lazy person would be, do, mm-hmm. um, doing just enough to get by. And then um, uh, Holy Spirit led me to Colossians, of course, Colossians 3, 17 and 22, 20, I mean, 23 and 23 is one of my favorite verses. Um, and I'm reading these in an Amplified Classic version, 17, Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, Mm -hmm. do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence upon him. Mm -hmm. His person giving him, giving praise to God the Father through him. So whatever we do in relationships, in work, in life, the person that we are because of Jesus Christ being in us, then there's no place for laziness in our lives. There's no place because so often, so many times in the scripture, um, the you hear the scripture you see the scripture saying be diligent mm-hmm. be, uh, you know be diligent be steadfast um even i love first corinthians saying that being steadfast that will be triumphant i think it's 15 58 um 57 and, fi- and 58 about being triumphant but be steadfast unmovable and always, always abounding in the work mm-hmm. of the lord so and then he talks about not getting weary and well doing mm-hmm. and that can happen but it, it is less likely to happen when we abide in him, when we mm-hmm. believe that through Christ Jesus, I have, a, I have power and authority to overcome anything that tries to press me down. Mm-hmm. And we get to that place where we will not, we will press back, we'll fight back and not like the, let the press overcome us, the weight of cares and whatnot overcome us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then verse 23 ta- is talking about working. What, um, Colossians 3, 22, 3. Whatever may be your task and Mm -hmm. work at it heartily from your soul, put your all into it from your heart as something done for the Lord and not for men. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we represent Jesus Christ in everything that we do because we are ambassadors. We are servants. We are supposed to be the light of the world, a salt, you know, the salt and light. That's who we're supposed to be. So in everything that we do, we're supposed to represent him. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, there's there are so many more scriptures about uh, laziness when it comes to work. But where God is just still just leading to me to is encouraging us to be watchful um, mm-hmm. that we not get off in uh, or, you know, get tricked by the enemy with the spirit of laziness. And I, he gave me a uh, first Peter, hold on a second here. Let me just go back to that. First Peter, uh-oh, where are my notes? Okay, mm. I'll come to that in a second. I don't, I didn't, I must've wrote it on another notebook. But let me just go to this one first. Um, um, let's look at Ephesians. Rochelle, can you get Ephesians five for me? I'm gonna look at that. Sure can. Where did I leave my notes? Sometimes I write on two pages. I turn two pages instead of one page. I know it's in oh, what verse? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh my God, what did I do? Five, uh, of God. Five, yeah, five, five, fifteen through seventeen. Oh, oh well, okay. Mm-hmm. So fifteen, okay. Um, that section is walking wisdom. So fifteen. 
It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, keep going. Therefore, yeah, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dispensation, but be filled with the spirit. Uh, 19. Mm -hmm. It was just 15, 16, and 17. Oh, okay. Well, all okay. right. That's good then. You got so, a bonus. You got yeah, you yeah, did. It's always good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so one of the things he tells us about being walking carefully and living a life of honor and, and integrity, so to speak, and um, and also being wise, being diligent. Mm -hmm. That's and I look. I'm looking at words here that are coming. Because uh, I do the Amplified, which gives a, an, um, mm -hmm. amplifies it more about what the Greek translation was. So mm -hmm. living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those uh, who tolerate uh, and enable evil. And so then it's telling us about being diligent, being sensible and, and intellectual or mm -hmm. intelligent and discerning people. That's what he expects of us. Because the enemy, our enemy is uh, treacherous. Our enemy is treacherous. Satan is going around like a roaring lion. And that's the one in, in First Peter that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Second Peter, like a roaring lion, see me, looking for whom he can destroy. And that he, like a roaring lion, he cannot. But he sure wants to frighten the heck out of us. He wants mm -hmm. to cause us to shake in our boots and believe that God is not, that things are not possible through God and that we have no power, no, no strength. So then it becomes uh, impossible imperative that we stand in our store our authority and use the power that of god has given us to overcome the things that challenges the the testings um that have have uh, come up against us because back in corinthians he said you haven't faced anything that first of all has ignored the man's face but you also haven't faced anything that i haven't given you a way to escape now mm -hmm. that's powerful in itself i've given you a way to escape laziness and so um, then for us, like on the times when I'm, you know, and I don't, I, I'm, the Bible tells us a rest. There is a rest. There's a time for rest. And if we're listening to the Holy Spirit, he'll say, okay, sleep now and wake up at whatever, and then do your study time. But for, for an example would be if I've been tired all day long and I know I needed to study, I know I haven't spent any time in studying or reading the scriptures or prayed at all, then I, it's, I need to get up and fight through that because mm -hmm. my strength, our strength, our energy comes from the Lord. He energizes us. If we allow him, he will put in us uh, uh, an energy that uh, like a supernatural strength to do what we need to do. If we just stand on his word, not our words. I found that using the word of God, uh, you know, by his strength, I am healed. God, yep. you are mm -hmm. my strength. You know, God, you have preserved me. You've brought me this far. I am the righteousness of God. And I just glorify his name. Suddenly I'm walking and doing and, and accomplishing the things that I wanted to do. I spent two hours studying and understood everything. So we just have to come to a place that we stand on the word of God. It sounds like a cliche sometimes, but standing on the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Getting promises, and that's one of the things that I um, share with some of the young ladies that I mentor, is, is get the promises of God and repeat God's word. Give God back his word. Give God his word. Use the word of God in your battle. You know, the, the, okay. the Ephesians talks about uh, putting on the whole armor, and the word is part of the armor. The sword of the, the, the spirit, the word of God is it. And that's what we have to use to fight the enemy. He's not afraid of our words. He's not mm -hmm. afraid of, oh, Lord, help me. He's afraid of, by his stripes, I am healed. The word of God says that um, I have power and authority in Jesus' name. That's Luke 10, 19. And then even repeating 10, 13, uh, Corinthians 10, 13. God, you know, God has given me the uh, for this test a way of escape. Mm -hmm. You know, we stand on the word of God. So anyway. Um, well, and can I say something? Sure, 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 sure. And what, what, what the enemy does is he misquotes the word. That's the first thing. But that the, the thing I just wanted to add is mm -hmm. God knows his words. And so because he's God, that's a faithful God. 
and he's mm-hmm. a just God, mm-hmm. and he's the God that cannot lie. He has mm-hmm. to honor what he says he's going yeah. to do, yeah. because he knows his word, and he cannot lie. So he has to honor what comes out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And so that's the power in speaking and praying the word of God or speaking the word of God or muttering mm-hmm. the word of God, you know, and mm-hmm. even memorizing and the old folks used to say mutter, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. That's the you meditation. Know. That's meditation. Mm-hmm. Meditating mm-hmm. on the word. And, and yeah. here's the thing, uh-huh. And meditation in today's thing, because the Bible says I will meditate on your uh, laws and precepts. Meditating in today's thing means empty. No, no, no. Meditating the word of God means feel, fill my mind mm-hmm. with your word because our mind is, is, is that's where the battle starts. So mm-hmm. it needs to be filled with the word. With, 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 uh-huh, with the word. Mm-hmm. That's like, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're, you're spot on. You're right on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And today's, uh, I mean, when you say today's, it's the world's, the world's view. It is what right, the world right, right, right. established as a uh, meditation. In the hurtful part, I was teaching a lesson last week. Uh, the hurtful part is that we put more credence, people, human beings. I'm not gonna say me. No, I, I can. I guess I can be guilty sometimes too. Let me let me just take a step back. But we can sometimes put more credence and more value on world values or world trends than we do the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I go into that whole uh, self care, and I'm not opposed to self-care i'm not um i'm not saying that we should not take care of the body because the bible tells us that the body is a mm-hmm. temple of god but when i want to face forsake all else and you know spend my time paying attention to me and what i need and my needs that's a worldview god says cast your cares on me and i will take care of you mm-hmm. god says you know take care of the body he says submit yourselves to me you know, mm-hmm. so selfishness, which is one of those landmines, has no, no place in the in the kingdom as for us as kingdom citizen, because uh, Jesus even tells us to deny ourselves. The cost of discipleship, uh, following being a follower of Christ Jesus, is denying yourself, mm-hmm. and that's denying self, meaning I'm not going to put a focus on me because Jesus, the Lord, is taking care of everything for me. Mm-hmm. As I follow him, as I follow mm-hmm. Christ, Christ will take care of everything that mm-hmm. concerns me. And mm-hmm. that's what his word tells us. So, I think we have anyway. to understand that the Bible has ultimate authority. And exactly. What says about everything, we have to weigh that up against what God says about whatever um, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when we examine, you know, is this particular thing that I'm doing, how does this align with what, what God says about it? Mm-hmm. And if it's not in alignment with what God says about it, then I need to shift my my focus or that desire and make it align with what God is saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it has. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we um, instead of asking God what this is, we tend to go on with um, what we want to do and how you know. Like even exercise stuff, uh, exercise and, and juicing and all this stuff. I I I'm I like it if I can when I can, and I'm I'm more of a person that likes natural foods and natural. Like I said, I'm drinking ginger drink this week. I'm gonna bless mm-hmm. that ginger juice, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be- I believe that everything God said, everything that I made was good, and I believe that the things that are from the earth are what God made is good. So, but even in that, God give me wisdom mm-hmm. because this ginger is not have more power than you Uh, and Mm -hmm. you are the ultimate heal jesus you're the great physician so Mm -hmm. it's you i'm dependent on not this ginger but i use this to help my mortal body today Mm -hmm. so even in that like you said putting our focus on the lord jesus and not on what it is that we're doing uh, or the things that we're using Mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead you're gonna say something and you know um i God bless me. He said, you know, start back from Genesis and just start from Genesis on. So I'm reading, uh, I'm in Deuteronomy right now. Mm -hmm. And just God is the God on purpose, of purpose, and for purpose. Mm -hmm. And so, (laughs) 
<laughs> so with that being said, just the foods and just this and just that, just say, no, no, no. <laughs> and this ain't no new thing. So being vegan, this, that, and, and all these paleo and kaleo and whatever, y'all, the word's been out. The word's been around since, well, before, I, before I, but it, it's, it's the word supersedes itself, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and he put this, this is what you can eat. This is what you can, this is clean and this is unclean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For uh, birds, for even the fish, and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so even with the grasshopper, I think mm -hmm. the grasshopper is the only thing that you can eat, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other insect you can't. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know. And so you start thinking, you know, and it's like, wow. I'm like, mm -hmm. God is mm -hmm. God is a God of purpose, on purpose, and for purpose. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I'm going to go to the book now because there's some great points that I wanted to bring out. Um, and he talks about, well, before I get to the emotions, on page 216, he talks about things to consider um, <coughs> in laziness. Um, one, he says that God expects us to live a discipline, to live disciplined lives. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we already went over, went through that. And so um, and to succeed over on 217, to succeed, you will need to work harder than your fellow man in the cube next to you. So we actually should be, our ministry at, our, at work should be reflecting how Christ mm -hmm. would work, how Jesus would work. And again, that Colossians 323, mm -hmm. um, if the boss says I need to do more work, we don't need to grumble. We need to say, okay, God, give me the strength to do more work. Mm -hmm. But we find sometimes our the Christian people will be the ones um in there complaining the most whining the most and i used to be i used to be guilty of it i, I was so ashamed when i got conviction of it whining and complaining and like i'm not gonna do that that's too much work you don't pay me enough and i just embarrassed my father because that's not who he created he created mm -hmm. me to go in there and show how working for him is the gr doing work and doing it to him how it glorifies God and how it brings people to want to know him, mm -hmm. you know, showing that whatever job I'm asked to do, I'm going to do it uh, faithfully. I'm going to do it diligently. As so unto him. Can be, yes, as, un, as unto him. I'm working for him mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, in my younger days, I had it, you know, I, I was a whiny baby. Um, but the one thing I want to go, let's go to page 219 and we talk about laziness and your emotions um and and it says that people can be emotionally lazy and i i see this is where that spirit of laziness is probably more evident and some of the characteristics is people that if you know people that don't have any goals don't have any ambitions um just just like to be they and and, and at first I thought, you know, that was okay. But then I'm thinking, God didn't create me to sit down here and just be happy and do nothing. Mm -hmm. He said that the Bible tells us the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. There's much work to be done in the, in the vineyard, in the fields. And so we need to be about God's business. Um, and I forget where it is, is that God created us with a purpose. Oh, that's mm -hmm. over. That's coming up in one of the, um, toward the end. So I'll, get, I'll wait till we get to that. But anyway, so uh, laziness and your emotions. The next one is lazy, uh, well, selfishness. And this is the one is having a selfish attitude is what says that I'm consumed with my needs. And it's not about what God has or God's purposes. It's about what I want. So not saying mm -hmm. that I want your will, but what is my desire? What do I want with my will? Um, and then uh, a lazy a spirit of laziness can have, People, that person can have a lack of faith. This is on 220. Mm -hmm. They can have a lack of faith in God and God's ability. Um, and he says that laziness leads to a faithless lifestyle because people decide they want to do what they want to do. And if it looks too hard, I'm not going to do it because I guess I'm not believing. I guess they wouldn't be believing in the power of God and what he can do. Um, and then it leads to a sense of pride because of course, then that's putting all the emphasis and focus on self. 
And since we talked about pride, I'm definitely not going to go into that one. Um, um, a, go over on the second page. These are the two most profound ones. A damaged testimony for God mm -hmm. on page 221 in the middle. Um, a spirit of laziness can be a damaged testimony to God. Mm -hmm. Believers have a keen responsibility to be energetic and committed. Mm -hmm. Laziness does not fit. Jesus Christ was not lazy. He was up mm -hmm. and going and praying and teaching. And he was about, he says, I have to be about my father's will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, God, you gave me too much to do today. This is too much. I don't have enough time in the day. That's the first thing that we complain about. There's not enough time. There's not enough time. Everybody gets the same 24 hours is how we manage it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And through, and with the help of the Lord, we can, I mean, like I said, he will supernaturally energize you. I'm a witness to that, mm -hmm. to do everything that he has for us to do. And so mm -hmm. maybe that may be a, uh, an indication that we're doing some things that God didn't ask us to do. There uh -oh. you go. Even if it's sometimes ministry. Does God tell us to be on every ministry at the church? No. Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't. Uh, but anyway, so that's again, going back to Lord, what do you want? What is your will? I want your will, Lord. I want to do what you want me to do. Um, and then it shows that it says, no, 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 no. And a part where it says a damaged testimony of God. Believers have a keen responsibility to be energetic and committed. Laziness does not fit in who we are in Christ. Jesus mm -hmm. rested and there was there will be times that we will need to do the same. But he never withdrew. He never withdrew from his earthly ministry uh, for the sole purpose of escaping responsibility. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do, we do it well as unto him and not as unto men. Um, it can weaken our relationship with God. And this was, this was so, this is one that I have faced. And if I'm not careful that I'll face, um, when you become lazy in one area, you will be slowful in other areas. And in fact, every area of your life, maybe this is not the, this is not the one I'm talking about. In fact, um, every area will suffer, especially worship and devotion. And what I was thinking about is when, you know, you get weary or tired from, from being ill, um, from having a chronic illness or something, you can, um, we can, we can decide I, I'll have to get to it tomorrow. It's always getting to it tomorrow instead mm -hmm. of today. Sandra, can you read, um, can you get Romans chapter 12? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse nine. And this is talking about, this whole thing is talking about Christian behavior. I only want to read a couple of those verses, mm -hmm. but there's a couple of different places in the Bible, um, Galatians, Romans, and in the letters and epistles that we learn about uh, Christian behavior, how God mm -hmm. expects, what the Lord expects of us as believers. Uh, people are always saying, God is a good God and he's just loving and caring and good, but God expects something from us too. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why God didn't. And the first th person we'll blame when things doesn't, don't go right is we blame God when it was us that we didn't do it. We blame the devil. We give the devil so much credit when we don't went out there, when we've gone out there and put ourselves into um, a situation or whatever that we should have. You guys, I'm sounding country just because I still haven't gotten rid of that Southern stuff. Since mm. I've been down south, oh, sorry. But anyway, um, Sandra, can you start with actually uh, verse 10? Let's go from 10 to 13, and that'll okay. be good enough. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fever uh, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Here with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Mm -hmm. Want me to keep going? Did you do 12? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, go 13. Um, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's just some of what he expects of us. And um, there's a verse in Galatians that talks about not talking about your bad about your brother and your sister, not talking bad about another believer. Mm -hmm. And so even that, God is telling us we have a responsibility to act, react, and to speak a certain way, in a mm -hmm. way that's pleasing the Lord. Um, 
and I'm, I'm I'm pretty partial to the epistles and I'm not sure why I don't know if it's the whole evangelistic ministry, but God has just shown me that we are to be living a life that's pleasing to the Lord because our mm -hmm. life is not our own. You know, right. this is a life that the Lord gave us, that God gave us, but it's not for ourselves. It's to glorify him in the earth, to bring right. him in the earth. So, yeah. And ignorance of truth, being lazy can cause us to be ignorance of truth. And now I just want to go over to page 224. Where's our time? Um, and talk about overcoming. How do we overcome laziness? And I'll just do the bullet points. Um, overcoming laziness, a la the landmine of laziness. Um, first of all, we have to know that God has given, created us for a purpose, mm -hmm. a specific purpose. He said, he, I, you, I created you uh, fearfully and wonderfully. We're unique, but mm -hmm. we also have a unique purpose. We both may be evangelists. We both may be teachers, but there's a uniqueness that comes about because of how he created us. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we think we're powerless. We're not powerless. We are not powerless. A spirit of laziness, laziness will think, make you think that you'll never be free, that you are powerless and that we can't do things. But the spirit of God that lives in us causes us to overcome all those things. Um, Sister then Sarah, we have to understand, huh? do you think it's because people try to emulate the other Christians? Mm -hmm. So instead of me uh, being my own authentic self, right because we all have mm -hmm. purpose like i want to teach like sister sherry i, mm -hmm. I want her gifting mm -hmm. you know like we're all called to be just uh we're all women of the lord and mm -hmm. we all have an evangelistic ministry we all have our own but i don't want what god has given me i want what he's got given you so instead mm -hmm. of me the roadmap god has taken me i haven't even like sought out the roadmap he's yeah given and, me. and that's I'm what i was gonna, gonna say Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's what, No, no, you're fine. That's actually really good. And the issue is, is that sometimes people are, they don't know. I think you'll find that from people who don't know who they are, what God has created them to do. Mm -hmm. And so they will desire what somebody else has got. But again, you don't have my anointing. I don't have your anointing. Mm -hmm. I have an anointing for a special calling. Sister Sandra mm -hmm. has that anointing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a, an anointing for us, for the call that's on our lives. And mm -hmm. so I can't walk like you. I can't teach like you. I can't be like you mm -hmm. because that's not my anointing. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, but the enemy causes us to look at each other and to envy each other and to then jealousy, that spirit mm -hmm. of jealousy, that landmine of jealousy pops mm -hmm. in and, and then causes us then to start um, sometimes backbiting each other, speaking mm -hmm. ill of each other. Um, and that's not what the Lord has caused us to be. But so our, 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 um, uh, our goal has to be to find out what our purpose is. Find out, God, mm -hmm. what did you call me to do? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Nobody else can not tell you. But when I can say, if we spend time, when you spend time with the Lord, you mm -hmm. will find out. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. decide, I'm not doing any extra stuff. Um, and I'm going to use the time that I have to be devoted. What does he say in uh, Colossians 4 and 2? To be diligent, devoted, focused in prayer with thanksgiving. In the presence of the Lord, when we can find ourselves, and I call this my prayer corner. I don't have a prayer closet, but I call this my prayer corner. <laughs> here in my room. I could go in the closet, but I don't like being in the closet. I like a place that I set up. So I call this my prayer corner. And this is my place where I'm I can be devoted to the Lord. I can give him, and he said, undivided, unrestricted, undisturbed time where the phone is quiet or if it rains, I'm not answering it because this is your time, Lord. This is my time with you. This is the time mm -hmm. to hear. And we, when we can put ourselves in a place where here I am, Lord, what do you want mm -hmm. to say? And mm -hmm. sit and wait. Mm -hmm. And if he comes, mm -hmm. if he says, pray, you pray, but you sit and you wait. And that's when you begin to hear him. Mm -hmm. That's when we can begin to hear him. When we dedicate, when we devote time to him, we can hear him. And then he'll open up, he'll illuminate, he'll give us revelation on what he has for us to do. Um, and that is not something that somebody finds out in one day. Mm -mm. God, I want to see you. Tell me what you no, want me to do. And you sit there and you think, oh, okay, I'm going to go do it. And then it falls apart. 
you know, you think, like, God, I thought you said. Well, he wouldn't say that. You said that. Your little mind, or either we heard the spirit of the enemy, the mm-hmm. devil speak. But when God puts it together, it's going to flow. Yeah. It's going to mm-hmm. flow, and it does flow. When you think about that, when we uh, think about that, it's like the manifestation of Esther's calling. It took time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. I'm sure she, I don't know what she was going through before that, but however, <laughs> Um, yeah. When that time came for her calling to come to fruition, you know, yeah. she, she was ready. She was bold. She, she was, was ready. a bold yeah. sister. But you um, know what, y'all? Uh-huh. It took prayer and fasting, though. See, we, we leave us some pretty good things. Fasting is a part of it. Prayer is a part of it. It's just not, okay, like, okay, you know, mm-hmm. talk to mm-hmm. me. Not, well, you know. I'm not going to say what God will and will not do because, you know, he talked to the donkey. You know, he caused the donkey yeah. to talk. So I'm not going to say what he yeah. will and yeah. will not do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, God normally does things like I say, you know, here, listen, there's consecration. Yeah. There's this. There's that, you know. So it's. And I, go ahead and finish your sentence. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no no no! I I I just okay. cut myself off because I don't want to be presumptuous and say, "Well, no, he does it like uh-uh. this." And I'm like, "Well, now, yeah, we can't say, say how that. he does." Mm-mm. But all I can say is how he has worked in my mm-hmm. life and what he's done. But what I also know, mm-hmm. again, the things that we're going through, and you figure like Esther, she was, God, it was setting her up all along. If we start to look at our lives, that what I'm going through, the test that I'm going through now. God must have a purpose because exactly. because we can't see over there. We can't see to the end. We don't know the story, but what blesses my soul every time is that God said, I knew the beginning. I knew the end from the beginning. Yes. God, you already know the whole story. Exactly. I just need to settle in and trust you to lead where you go and follow where you're going so that I exactly. get to that place of victory too. Yeah. So exactly. and again, I go back to this scripture. I'm so glad for this lesson in this first Corinthians 13 there consistently reminds me that this sherry like the the tooth thing i'm like jesus all right they're like okay we're gonna extract the tooth we're gonna do this i was like hold up and i was like lord what is this and i not you know i had to pull back because sometimes we'll find ourselves going and going and going and going with the flow of things instead of saying lord what is this what is this what's going on And, and stopping and seeking the lord but the thing that god wants from us the most is to be disciplined disciples, disciplined learners, be teachable, to be um, dedicated and focused with him, to spend time in his presence, um, to get to hear his voice so that we don't mm-hmm. follow after the voice of the enemy. So often we're following after the voice of the enemy because oh, that sounds so good. It has to be the Lord. Now, the Lord is not the only one that's saying, giving us good things. It's the enemy he wants to entice us uh, wants mm-hmm. to get to our carnal nature and satisfy our carnal nature. Mm-hmm. And so he will, you know, oh, I just want a million dollars. Let me go buy, 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 buy me this. God, if I got a million dollars, what do you want me to do with it? Probably yeah. God. <laughs> okay. Or he might have some people that he may have blessed you for you the to blessed. go bless some people. There's somebody mm-hmm. in your life that you've mm-hmm. touched that needs this. And so uh, again, it's uh, us seeking the Lord for his will and um, the next verse, the next section here, number three says, God has a plan for your life. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 29, 11. He assures us that he knows that he, that he has a plans for us and um, plans for our good. For that mm-hmm. Here it says welfare, but plans to prosper us, plans to do good for us. And so that's where we have to be at a place. First of all, God created us with a purpose. We're powerful in him. God has a plan for our life and a plan to do us well. So mm-hmm. we don't have to worry about if I'm following God, it's going to be a whole bunch of trials. It's going to be a whole lot of heartache. God just growing us up. When things are happening, yes. God just might be growing us up. And things that I face may not be things that either one of anybody else face because he has a unique way that he has to grow me up. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing, God forgives our sins. You know, Satan wants us to believe that we are condemned, that, oh my God, I sinned again. Oh my God, I forgot again. Oh my God, oh my God. You know, I did this, I did that. But, the, you know, Romans tells us um, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And there, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. We're in him. 
Mm-hmm. Our carnal nature will rise up sometimes and cause us to falter. But what did David do? He said, create in me a clean heart. Renew mm-hmm. a steadfast spirit within me. Go back to the foot of the cross, I call it. Lord, come mm-hmm. to my heart. Lord, I'm here. If it's nighttime, I might have to get on my knees at this on the side of my bed. It might be some of the, it might be one of those things. I'm like, Lord, I did real bad this time, or whatever. Or the burden is so heavy for the sin. Or the the um, you know, when I done something, I know that I acted in a way and, and that hasn't been pleasing to the Lord. I've I snapped and got angry. Mm-hmm. God, that's not what you called me to be. I'm so right. sorry. And then if right. he's leading me to go back and apologize to the person, then I will. Uh, you know, so first of all, we have to know that God forgives our sins and he did not create us a living condemnation, but mm-hmm. the enemy will use, he uses all these little things. And I'm, I'm thankful for this book. And this is a good book, a good read to help us see that there are tricks that the enemy uses. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. They talk about mm-hmm. the tricks of the devil, but here are some tricks of the devil, pride, uh, a prideful heart, mm-hmm. jealousy, and envy, a secure insecurity, mm-hmm. unforgiveness, compromise, slowfulness, mm-hmm. immorality, fear. Um, all of those things are there. They're tricks of the enemy to cause us to, to doubt, cause us to be shaken in our shoes, so to speak, to mm-hmm. even doubt our salvation mm-hmm. um, and, and doubt that we know the Lord, who we are in the Lord. So, but the Lord, I, we just we 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 um have to believe and this is the next one here he is our only source of victory we have to come to the point where we know mm-hmm. that god that jesus christ the 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 living son of god of the living god is our only source of victory mm-hmm. um and it says life's greatest foe is no match for god's son he is your victory your hope your defender and your stronghold, your strength and your fortress. Mm-hmm. Psalms 18. And I'm, I'm going to just get that really quick. Psalms 18. Um, so that's where we have to come to a place that Jesus Christ, I have victory. We have, we already have the victory. The victory's already been won. Our mm-hmm. goal is just to walk in that victory and not get caught off by or not get caught mm-hmm. up with the stuff. So we have to encourage people. Uh, and especially the young adults, um, I find that's where I spend a lot of time is, well, not only young adults. And and you know what? Sometimes it's there are days I have a, a, a good, a really dear friend. She still lives up in Denver. And she and I have been friends since before Philip was born. So over 30 some years. And, you know, there are days I encourage her and there are days that she encourages me. So the Bible talks about, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> iron sharpening iron and mm-hmm. encouraging each other. So we never get to a place where we are not needing some encouragement and the devil will cause us to want to, excuse me, to hide back, to shrink back and say, well, I can't tell them that I can't tell the sister that we all need at least one person, one sister in the Lord that we can call Mm -hmm. that we can say, sis, I'm struggling today. I'm challenged. I've got a challenge today. Agree with me. Not, um, it's not for gossip. You got it's that person that you know that you can trust that whatever you've done or whatever has happened that you know that they want for your good more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and they will pray for you and they will encourage you and they'll check on you the next day to make sure you still up and going and doing okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good to have that. I used to be afraid to tell people that when I was struggling, when if if I hadn't been so afraid to tell people that I was struggling in my marriage. I probably still been been married. Really, thirty some years later, I've still been married, but I struggled. You think and I so? Did, I know so, because some things would have been different if I had. I didn't tell people. I did not go to. Well, I did go to a couple people that some stuff they said just did not make sense to my brain. Um, but that's for another day, another time. Okay. But <laughs> I'm just saying that how, <clears throat> if we're not careful, um, some people can you know, turn from the faith because it's hopeless because mm-hmm. it's, they feel like it's too hard. So for us to know this and then to be able to share this with others that Jesus is the source. He's a, yes. He is the strength of our lives. He's mm-hmm. the source of our victory. He is our hope mm-hmm. and he never fails us. He never fails. He is not gonna, I've never had a time when I've gone to the Lord with everything, with my whole heart 
my mm-hmm. whole heart. Jeremiah said, you will find me when you call upon me with your whole heart. You will see mm-hmm. me. You will find mm-hmm. me when you seek me with your whole heart. When we wholeheartedly seek the Lord, he mm-hmm. will not fail us. Mm-hmm. But when we're, when we're, and I don't say flip it, but when we are too busy to stop and say, God, here, I need you. Mm-hmm. They sing a song, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Mm-hmm. When, when, when that becomes a testimony in your spirit, when we can come from our soul, our spirit and say, God, I need you. I cannot walk this earth. I cannot live this life without you. Mm-hmm. Then, um, then we get to the place where we can be supernaturally energized start to supernaturally hear and and get the connection with the sister or brother that's right here on earth that we can hear from or god mm-hmm. will just he'll speak a word he'll speak a word he'll bring back um to us something that we learn um but in any case yeah i'm just that's that's what i know um psalms 18 david praising the lord for his rescue um mm. the, <clears throat> he starts he says i love you Fervently and devoted, oh Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, with everything inside of me. I love you. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, the one who rescues me, my rock and my strength, in whom I take refuge, I trust and I take refuge, my shield and my horn of salvation. I call upon you who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. That's the first three verses. That that whole chapter is just... I just love David. Oh, he just knew how to run to the feet of the cross and say, God, I love you and my strength, you're my help. And just really just come with a repentant spirit, come with a, mm-hmm. a, a sincerity of heart. And mm-hmm. I just know that when we get to a place of being like that, then um, the light God illuminates through us and people see that. And lives are changed just because of our presence. Sometimes we don't have to say anything. The spirit of the mm-hmm. Lord dwelling upon us will do the work. He just needs us to be a carrier, to be a host, so to speak. Mm-hmm. He needs us just to come with his presence and lives will be changed. And so um, in the second par- <clears throat> paragraph, it says, when you pray, ask, ask God to give you his discernment and wisdom. Not only Mm -hmm. for your present circumstances, but also for every area of your life. Surrender every area of our lives to him. But um, like laziness, like fear, like pride, like all of it, we Mm -hmm. can overcome it. And we have victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's my lesson. Amen. Praise God. That's an Praise awesome God. lesson. It is an awesome lesson. I just like, I'm so, I was like, God, I've read it and read it and read it. And then, yeah, but anyway, because we're recording, but yes, God just illuminates to us the word. And just, I just, I just admonish anybody and I always tell anybody, just take time with the Lord. If mm-hmm. you give him time, he'll give you him. He will be with you. He is always with us, but we, 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 we are lacking when we don't get to experience his presence, when we don't, when we don't understand, you know, sometimes we know, but when we can experience his presence, when we know like, God, you're right there and you could just, you just feel him, mm-hmm. just, you just almost feel him next to you. That's a, that's a special place to be. And so just encouraging people to spend time with the Lord so that you, we can experience his presence and grow in that. Yeah, because the time is coming where we're going to have to know it's the voice of God, because if we don't, if we listen to the wrong voice, mm-hmm. it could take us into destruction. Well, and you know, there is head knowledge and heart knowledge in your mm-hmm. heart and your head's what, 18 inches, you know, mm-hmm. and um, so it's more important to have, I mean, yes, you need the head knowledge. I'm not saying that you don't. But to have that heart experience, the Bible says, I stand at you, that Jesus says that he stands at the door of our hearts and knocks. So when we have mm-hmm. that heart experience, mm-hmm. that you know, um, that heart experience, the head knowledge to get there. But if you have, if you look at the Bible like a, a, a book, like some of these professors, oh, I read the Bible, but did you read it? If you don't have the discernment of the Holy Spirit, yeah, well, I'm sure you did read the Bible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and, sh- and remember God looks at the heart 
It's the heart. Mm -hmm. That's where the spirit man resides. That's that's who mm -hmm. God wants to connect to. That's where he wants mm -hmm. to be with us there is that place. Um, right. Yeah, Make my heart right. your home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, Sister yep. Sandra, you have anything? And I apologize for cutting you off. I was just so excited by what you said about Esther. I just, I got so excited and I cut you off. I so oh, apologize. No, you, you didn't cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't cut me off at all. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but this was. He hides his word in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yep. He says to hide your word. I, what did, uh, what was it? Um. Isaiah, hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against it. And so yeah, that's, that's, that's true. studying the word of God. And so, and that's where the Holy Spirit will bring back to us when we put in is You can't bring to our memory stuff we didn't put in there. Mm -hmm. so we got to mm -hmm. put it in. So that means putting in some time. And sometimes it's just reading and sometimes it's studying one scripture, mm -hmm. but it's, it's being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, and I never... I make a practice of never to study or read the word of God without praying. So mm -hmm. pray, read, pray, pray, read. And you got to stop. It's like, Lord, what are you saying? And then go back and keep praying. But I just, I find that praying as I'm reading, praying as I'm studying is what helps to receive the revelation there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The word is so important. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and if we think about it, it's part of the armor. That mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the week is exactly. exactly exactly that's for sure well, i think what is it all the other uh armaments are uh for defense right mm -hmm. that's your mm -hmm. that's your offensive <laughs> you know that's, that's the one that's gonna slice you that's true that's you know true. what i'm saying yeah and so that's it's true. um so it's you know you have your helmet protection yeah. defense uh, you know your breastplate or am i saying it backwards defense no you no, know you're, you're, right. oh, you're saying it right you're exactly you know right. yeah. um yeah. Uh, your shield right. defense uh, for protection for defense, yeah. but it's only the sword that could sh that's the word that's of god the yeah the web yeah yep. that fortifies yeah. us to mm -hmm. be able to stand yep mm -hmm. yep Exactly so, right. That's glory to God for that. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's so powerful. That's what Jesus used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, the word. <laughs> and you know what? Let me, you guys, so I'm in Deuteronomy, and it's so. I, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy. Well, he quoted the whole entire book, uh -huh. the Old Testament. But to see how much he quoted out of Deuteronomy, I'm just like, whoa. When he says, you know, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every uh thing, uh, but but by everything out of oh my goodness. Every word that yeah. proceeds from yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's um in Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, all right. He referred, he referred and quoted the old testament a lot. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know, just and yeah, just like if you look at the Old Testament, you can see Jesus already in the Old Testament. Already the in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right, right. So yeah. and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So when you so see the, the, back, um, the book about Jesus, uh -huh. it's, about the back. It's, it's about Jesus. It's a book about yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I stand in agreement. Yes. <laughs> Which book did you say? From, from the beginning to the end, it's a, it's oh, a book okay. about Jesus, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so when you see the Pharisees saying, you know what, our father Abraham, I'm like, wait, what? Or our Moses, I'm like, well, what? Mm -hmm. Like, hold up, if you read, wait, what? How yeah. are you going to teach? Wait, what? You yeah. know, so. Mm. And I, I just think so often that you know, Bible study is so important because you're not going to get all that you need in a sermon. A sermon on Sunday should be a springboard for your study for the week. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not, I mean, what I under, what I what I've adopted is definitely reading through the Bible, but definitely having a weekly study. And sometimes it may oh, be yeah. one thing, but the the sermon of the week should be a, a place for us to study because again, if you're sitting on a person that's your pastor, that is your covering. And right. so that's the one that's speaking a word that God has given to speak a word into your life for your growth. And so um, 
that's why it's, I think I say studying out the word that my pastor is preaching is as important as anything else Mm -hmm. and not feasting at every table. Right. Letting feast primarily at the table that you're sitting at as opposed to grabbing from other places now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, yep. A great lesson. I love it. Very. (laughs) Well, next book. Next book? Yeah, next book. So <laughs> wait, we gotta close uh, out. Let me let me close okay, out in let, prayer and yeah, get offline. Okay. Yeah. Gracious Lord, we just thank you so much for this amazing lesson and reminding us that the spirit of laziness has no place in our lives as a as sons and daughters of the most high God. So we thank you now that you would just reveal to us where we might even have an inkling of laziness, mm-hmm. supernaturally strengthen us and energize us, Father. That we ha- that having eyes we may see and having ears we may hear, mm-hmm. and um, and that your word be planted in our heart that we follow after your word that we follow you and that we dedicate our lives by being disciplined and of being a disciplined learner of your word and of you. Yes. Cause us to study to know you, not to understand more facts, but to get to know you more and more. God, we just love you and we just we just say thank you. We appreciate you. Thank um, you. And we, In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.